Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church. Uh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at home, I'm a home base, and uh, excited about what we're going to explore this week uh, with the powerful points to ponder, unpacking God's word on a daily basis, meaningful moments with the master. I'm excited because we're going to venture into what has to be the most misunderstood, misquoted, and most avoided book in the entire Bible, and I need not tell you what that book is. And that's the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. My God, when I was younger, I used to hear all types of frightening tales about the book of Revelation. Uh, they say, if you're gonna read it, make sure you never read it by yourself because it's so frightening that uh, it will cause you to be afraid. It will cause panic. So don't read the book of Revelation. And of course, we know that Hollywood has had a field day because of our ignorance about the book of Revelation and what it's about. Uh, there were a series of, of uh, movies that were uh, talked about the, uh, the Antichrist, the emergence of this world leader, the Antichrist, uh, called the Omen. And they used to have sequels called the Omen 1, Omen 2, Omen 3, and with the eerie music and uh, I think that the, the character who was the Antichrist was a, a, a young boy named Damien who was protected, Damien. Well, none of what you saw in those movies was true. It's mythology that was based on our ignorance. Listen, the book of Revelation is not to cause you to be afraid if you're on God's side. It's designed to bring you, as we shall see, comfort and hope and the assurance that in the end, God's going to win. That's what the book of Revelation is really about. It's not, in fact, it's not a book that's designed to be misunderstood. It's a book that's designed to be understood. Just listen to the word revelation or revealed. Now to say something has been revealed means that it first had to be concealed. And the word revelation literally means that here is some information that at one time was concealed or literally veiled. In fact, look at listen to the word revelation and see if you don't hear the word veil in the very word revelation. Revelation something veiled like a bride who walks down the aisle at her wedding and stands next to her husband to be her groom and when the husband kisses his wife he pulls up the veil and then he kisses his wife and basically that's what the book of revelation is really all about that god's plans and god's purposes have been veiled or hidden and now God is pulling back the veil so that humankind and the Christian church can see the plan and purposes of God. The word revelation or the Greek word revelation is the Greek word apocalypto, apocalypto. It is the word from which we get our English word apocalypse. Perhaps you remember the movie, I think it was in the 80s or 90s, entitled Apocalypse Now. It was a war movie about destruction. That's an appropriate name for the movie Apocalypse because it's a, movie, it's a movie about war, about Vietnam. And the book of Revelation is a book about a great war, great conflict uh, that is taking place. So the book of Revelation is not something to be feared it's supposed to be cheered, especially by Christians. Let me say it again, not feared, not but cheered, uh, not concealed, but revealed. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a great book. Um, in fact, the word revelation, apocalypto, something being unveiled, the veil being put back, that very word is found multiple times in the New Testament. Let me give you an example. Look at Luke chapter two and verse 32. Luke 32 says, and, and this is what uh, God revealed to Simeon, that uh, the, the, the old man 
who saw uh, the, the, the Christ child. And, and Simeon would say, would said that Jesus, the baby Jesus, when he grows up, will be a light for revelation to the Gentiles. Now, what does that mean, a light of revelation to the Gentiles? That means that the Gentiles did not understand God's plan to salvation. So Jesus would be a revelation. He would take back the veil so that non-Jews would know God's plan for salvation. Remember the Apostle Paul in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, when he talks about uh, the thorn in the flesh, he would later talk about his thorn. And that is because to keep him humble, because he had so many, he'd been given so many revelations. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and this is the chapter in which he talks about his thorn in the flesh. He says, I must go on boasting. Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. And what he's going to say is that one, one of the reasons why God gave him a thorn in the flesh was to keep him humbled and grounded because he had had so many revelations. God had unveiled so many truths that no one knew about, and God took the veil off for Paul so that Paul could discover these truths and become the great apostle that uh, he became. So the book of Revelation is simply God taking the veil off of, off of God's plan and God's purposes so that Christians, and that's very important, so that Christians might know what God is up to. Now, uh, several weeks ago, in fact, the exact date was April the 13th, and you can go back and look at the Powerful Point to Ponder on April the 13th. Uh, it was part of a series. We did a, a special Powerful Point to Ponder on how to study the Bible without losing your mind. And there was a word I gave you called hermeneutics, and that is how to interpret the Bible. That's what hermeneutics is all about. Now, listen. If you don't interpret the book of Revelation right, and this is the problem with the book of Revelation, is that because we don't use good hermeneutics, many people go to the book of Revelation in order to justify and rationalize things that are so incongruent with what the Bible teaches. Uh, I don't know if you heard of a man named Charles Manson, but Charles Manson committed one of the most heinous murders, Sharon Tate, Lubanka, uh, 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 murders back in the late 60s. Charles Manson said that the whole health to skelter murders was based on what he was reading in the book of Revelation. So that means that anybody can go to the book of Revelation if you don't have sound principles for interpreting the scriptures to rationalize and justify and see in the book of Revelation what you are not supposed to see. That is why uh, when we talked about how to study the Bible without losing your mind and talked about principles of hermeneutics, that these there are just standard principles that you have to apply whenever you study the Bible. Anytime somebody says to you, this is what a passage means, they're not prepared to tell you what a passage in the Bible means if they're not first are able to answer four questions, four questions. Now, there are five A words I'm going to give you. The first four words are questions, and the fifth A word is after answering the question, you can say, now I can tell you what the scripture means. In fact, you have to discover what the passage meant before you can determine what it means, what it meant what it, when it was written, and, th and then you determine what it means today. And here are the five words that I want you to always remember whenever you are interpreting the Bible. First of all, you need to ask yourself the question, who is the author? If I'm studying the book of Jeremiah, I need to know something about who Jeremiah is, where he came from, what he's dealing with, what type of personality he is. You need, to, if I'm studying the book of Luke, I need to know who Luke is. I need to tell you, you need to tell me something about Luke. Why is Luke different than Mark? You need to first understand who the author is. And that is why also during that series, which how to study the Bible with all, how to study the Bible without losing your mind. On the last day of the series, I gave you about five books that every serious student of the Bible was having in their library because these are the questions that the books that I gave you on that Saturday will answer. You might want to go back and watch that uh, powerful point to ponder, but you need to know who the author is, who the author is, two, who the audience is, who the audience is. Now, sometimes you don't know who the author is. Sometimes you don't know who the audience is. Most of the time you can reconstruct who the audience is. Think of, for example, 
um, when you're talking, let's say you're talking on the phone and uh, while you dial somebody's number, you don't get the person, but inadvertently you are able to pick up on a phone conversation that's taking place between two people. Now, all you can do is, is listen to one of the persons talking. You can't hear the other person's response. And you accidentally picked up. Now, of course, we as Christians know that we should probably just shut the phone down. But let's just say that um, you happen to keep the phone to your ear and listen. And you can't really tell what the other person is saying. But since the person keeps talking about doctors and hope to see the doctor soon, you can reconstruct that they're probably talking about something medical. And that's called hermeneutics. It's reconstructing what the initial conversation is about. So and there's a conversation between an author and audience. John, who writes the book of Revelation, or who's the scribe of the book of Revelation, is talking to a particular audience. He's talking to some churches. So you need to know who the author is, who the audience is, and then thirdly, what the alarm is. What is the critical issue that prompted the writer to pick up the writer's pen and write to the particular audience? They didn't write just to write. For example, if you write a letter to somebody, you just write a casual letter, or you just send a text, hey, how you doing? No, there was an issue that prompted the persons to write what they wrote in every book of the Bible. And before somebody can answer the question what it means, they need to be able to tell you what it meant in its initial in its initial historical context by telling you, well, you need to know what the alarm is, what the issues are. Four, what the answers are. What does the author say God is saying the answers to the particular problem is. Once you have outlined these four questions, answered these four questions, then you are able to make application. You build a bridge between the world of the author and the world and your own world. You build a hermeneutical bridge that's called application. Then you're able to apply it. Now, if you can't answer those four questions, you're not ready to do application. Now, let's look now at some verses in the book of Revelation as we close. Revelation chapter 1 and verses 1, 2, and 3. Remember I told you that many people are afraid to look at the book of Revelation because of the mystery of the big book. And it has a lot of mysteries, and as we see, a lot of codes in the book of Revelation. But, but the book of Revelation is something designed to bless us, as we shall see. Verse 1 says, the revelation which means unveiling from Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus Christ is unveiling something to us, something that prior to the book of Revelation, which was written in A.D. Uh, 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 95, A.D. 95, that prior to the book of Revelation was concealed. Now, Jesus is coming, and Jesus is going to take the veil off of God's plan and purpose. You know, many people want to know the will of God for their life because it's veiled. And many people want to know why did certain things happen? Why did God, and you can't figure out why God has let it happen. And it's veiled. But then all of a sudden you get this revelation. Oh, it makes sense. Now I understand why all of this happened. God left this door shut because God was opening another door. God took this person out of my life because this person was toxic and I wouldn't be where I am. Now you didn't understand it while you were going through it because the veil was over it. But then all of a sudden you just had the God just reveals it to you. Your eyes open up and you take the veil off. That's what's happening. It says the revelation, the unveiling from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. I can't emphasize enough that must soon take place because the book of Revelation was designed to speak to the people in the year AD 95, take place, soon take place, not 2000 years. It's not predicting what's going to happen in our generation. It is, it is telling us what happens in every generation, as we shall see, because what happens in the first century is the same thing that's happening in the 21st century and how Christians are supposed to respond to it. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant, John. All right. Now, I've already told you who the author is. The author is John. All right. We're going to later find out who uh, who the uh, the audience is, but we know it's John, who is the apostle, the apostle John, 
who testifies, this is what John, who testifies to everything he saw that is the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So this revelation, what is unveiled is literally the word of God. Verse three, blessed is the one who reads aloud the word of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take heart uh, and what is written in it because the time is near. Now he pronounces a blessing on what we're doing right now. He's pronouncing a blessing on what we're doing. In fact, notice what verbs he used. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. Blessed, my God, which means blessed of those who honor the book of Revelation. Honor the book of Revelation. Don't be afraid of it. Honor it. The blessed of those who read aloud the words of this prophecy, blessed of those who hear the book. So not only honor the book, but here's the second H word, hear the book. Honor the book. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be intimidated by it. You want the blessing that comes with, with it? Honor it. And then it says, hear it. And then take it to heart. That means, here's the third H word, heed it, heed it, take it to heart. Honor the book, you, you read it aloud, I honor it, I'm going to read it aloud. Blessed are those who, second H word, hear the book, I'm going to understand what it means. And take it to heart, I'm going to believe it or I'm going to heed it. Honor it, honor it, hear it, heed it. And the result is, you're going to receive a special blessing from honoring, hearing, and heeding the book of Revelation. Well, we're going to look at the book of Revelation of this entire week, and I think it's going to be a, an exciting study. It's, it's, you're going, some things are going to be unveiled to you, some important principles that we need to know, especially in the world in which we are living in today. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your people, and thank you that when some things are concealed and we don't understand why things happen, you take the veil off and now they are revealed and we've got peace in our heart because everything makes sense. I pray, oh Lord, that you will bless this week of study, uh, that you will help us to really understand what the book of Revelation is all about. Grant that this might be an exciting week for all of your people. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so very much for being with me with another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Everyone needs a church home. So contact us, email us here at St. Stephen Church, newstart at ssclive.org. Peace and blessings to you. Have a fantastic day, and we'll gather again tomorrow uh, to continue our study in the book of Revelation, a special book with a special blessing, a special book with a special blessing. But until then, don't forget during COVID-19, remember to stay safe, stay sane, and if you can, stay home. God bless you. See you tomorrow.